the official opposition certainly remains very critical of this strong speech. But never before has a federal government fallen on the basis of a strong speech. Canadians can count on the official opposition to do everything it can to make this parliament work. To that end, we will propose amendments. And we will not make the government fall on its own speech, which would cause a third general election in four years, something Canadians have clearly shown they do not want. The amendments we are putting forward would enable us to support the throne speech. If they are rejected, we'll do as the NDP when they decided in October 16, 2006, to abstain on a vote on the softwood lumber agreement in order to avoid causing an election. As, as, an, as, another, as another leader of the official opposition said some years ago, we believe it's not in the national interest to have an election now. What's become apparent is that the Bloc Québécois and the NDP will grandstand on these things, but it is up to us, our caucus, to decide whether the time has come to have an election. In our judgment, I think in, I think in Canadian judgment, it is not that time. End of the quote. Everybody will have guessed that this leader of the opposition, quoted on March 10, 2005, is our, is our current Prime Minister, when he was explaining his party's abstention to the 2005 budget. One would have the impression from the speech from the Honourable Member that uh, he has major concerns with the direction that this government is taking. In fact, that there are fundamental disagreements. Uh, we share that assessment of the speech from the throne and of the direction of this government. But instead of presenting self-congratulatory amendments and offering to simply sit in their place and abstain, Mr. Speaker, I offer, I offer to the Leader of the Opposition the option to do the right thing, which is to join with the NDP, which is going to be rising in opposition to the direction of this government, because it can't be sugar-coated, it can't be tinkered with, with self-congratulatory commentary and amendments. Will the Honourable Leader of the Opposition do the right thing, show some leadership and stand up to the Conservative government and its agenda, which is wrong for Canada? Here, here. Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, I have a responsibility that the Honourable Member doesn't. Right on. Yes. You can form a government. Prime Minister of this country, Mr. Speaker. And I remember, I, remember, I remember a leader of the opposition some years ago, not so long ago, that I just quoted, that said exactly the same, it worked for him, it will work for me. Uh, Mr. Speaker, as I uh, listen to the uh, Leader of the Opposition, I must say, uh, reminded me a little bit of the professor who um, goes through your term paper and marks all over it everything he disagrees with, but then passes you anyway. <laughs> as expected, the Liberals abstained from the final vote on the speech from the throne, allowing it to pass and putting off a snap election. Uh, what do you think of that strategy? Well, I think that people are going to wonder uh, what, what the uh, Liberals stand for. I guess they were more concerned about their own seats at the end of the day because uh, what we believe that, that people want to know is that a party is going to stand on its principles and, and stand up for Canadians against the agenda of, of Stephen Harper. They think it's wrong for Canada. We certainly do. Henceforth, both Jack Layton and the Conservative ministers are saying, uh, are stressing, that this shows that you're weak, that you didn't stand up for a position, that you didn't take a position, that <laughs> well, you don't have principles. Well, it's, it's, it's a crock of unmitigated horse feathers, to put it, uh, to put it as politely fact, as I in can. In fact, I'll be much more polite. I'm going to thank Ralph. <laughs> You don't know, bother. Us don't that mandate don't bother thanking me. You don't have a given mandate. Us the mandate to proceed. You don't have a mandate, speech, and that's exactly what we were seeking, and that's exactly what we obtained today.
things we were going to do were clearly spelled out, and we believe we now have a mandate to, to do that, and we were appreciative that the Liberal Party uh, allowed that mandate. To okay, a last, a last question then, a last question uh, to Ralph Goodale then. then. I guess the question is, how do you turn the page? After well, 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 first of all, uh, don't get sucked in by the, by the spin and the rhetoric of either the Conservatives or the NDP. In fact, the Conservatives sat out a vote on a budget in, in the past Parliament, and the NDP sat out a vote, which was a confidence matter, in this Parliament on softwood lumber. So, in fact, there are precedents that, that, uh, that affect all political parties in terms of the legitimacy of, of an abstention. We will deal with all of the legislation that's coming forward. Uh, if, if we find that legislation is unacceptable, we will vote against it. Okay, well, to both Those of these... are the things that matter. The throne speech is a symbolic gesture. It does not carry any legal consequences, and we're not going to get suckered into playing a short-term foolish political game. Okay, thank you both uh, very much. Thanks a lot. Uh, we'll see what will uh, happen with the government, but we know that Canadians don't want elections, and uh, we'll uh, continue to do our role as official opposition, explaining why we disagree with the government.